Six Flags, a company known for its long history has a unique tradition, making poor decisions. This tradition goes back to when they joined forces with Time Warner, which ended badly. In the early 2000s, they spent an enormous amount of money on new roller coasters, only to go bankrupt a few years later. Surprisingly, their current CEO, Selim Bass, is carrying on this tradition. Last year in 2022, the theme park industry saw a major resurgence. After a slow 2020 and 2021 due to COVID and shutdowns, there was a huge demand for theme parks. People couldn't visit them for a long time, so when they finally could, it led to record-breaking revenues and attendance for most theme park companies. The reason I say most of is because Six Flags didn't follow the crowd. See, Salem became Six Flags' CEO in early 2022, and he introduced a completely new strategy in a year that seemed like easy money. Salem decided that Six Flags should become a premium destination like Disney or Universal. It's a great idea, but it surely must be a long-term plan. These parks would need a lot of investment to reach that level. You can't just suddenly declare them premium overnight, can you? That's pretty unthinkable, isn't it? Salem's plan to turn Six Flags into a premium destination was simply to raise the prices. He believed the parks were already top-notch and increasing the cost would attract visitors. Unfortunately, this approach backfired. Attendance plummeted and both revenue and net income dropped. While other companies in the same industry were thriving, Six Flags had a terrible year. Compared to their top competitor, Cedar Fair, they were left far behind. It appeared that this would be a moment we'd remember as the time Six Flags made a big mistake, leading to their decline. Surprisingly, a year later, Selim is still with the company. This is surprising because Six Flags has a history of changing CEOs frequently. Despite his past missteps, Selim has somehow earned a second chance. So, as we move into 2023, one year after that tough period, what has Selim done to try to get Six Flags back on track and avoid the problems they faced in 2022? Hello again, Selim. There are two notable changes Selim made. First, he initially raised the prices, but that didn't work out, so he had to lower them back to a level that's a bit higher than in 2019. However, what's important to note is that there have been continuous sales on season passes from October 2022 through May of this year. These sales have been frequent and quite remarkable. Now, the big question for Six Flags is whether they may have alienated their customers. Do people even realize that prices have come down? Are they interested in returning? This is especially important because there aren't many new rides opening across the Six Flags parks this year. Furthermore, the demand for theme parks is not as high as it was a year ago, removed from 2022. While Selim's strategy may seem promising on the surface to attract more guests, it's uncertain whether it will work. To assess the situation, we now have Six Flags second quarter results, covering April through June, which is the start of the peak season for Six Flags parks. These results will give us a good idea of how Six Flags is likely to perform for the rest of the year. So, Selim, the ball is in your court. Let's see how things have unfolded. Oh my, it's a 55% drop in net income. What happened? Even for someone like me, who's quite skeptical about Six Flags' current state, this earnings report was shockingly bad. I couldn't believe how terrible these numbers were. If 2022 was a nightmare, then what does that make 2023 so far? We need to dig deep and understand why net income fell so drastically. It's just unbelievable. But the good news is, this might not be as terrible as it initially appears. Six Flags has a reasonable explanation for this decline. They made a $38 million adjustment in their self-insurance reserves. What does that mean? Essentially, it's like taking $38 million which would have been available as cash and setting it aside in a separate account dedicated to covering insurance claims. This ensures that any settlements or accidents are kept separate from the company's regular financial performance. They claim this increase in self-insurance reserves is due to rising payouts for injuries and other factors, essentially putting more money aside for potential insurance risks. However, what's peculiar is that they argue this is an industry-wide issue, even though none of their competitors have mentioned it. Disney, Universal, Cedar Fair, and SeaWorld 
haven't reported such a significant increase in their self-insurance reserves. So, why did Six Flags have to make such a substantial adjustment? It appears to be a result of poor management. They likely neglected to gradually increase it over time, unlike their peers who may have done so in smaller increments, not warranting a big mention in their earnings reports. In 2021, just before Selim took over, Six Flags had to pay out a $36 million settlement to guests of Six Flags Great America in Illinois. This incident might have been overlooked or forgotten in the midst of changes in leadership. It's quite likely that they didn't realize they needed to make smaller regular payments into the self-insurance reserve to replenish what was paid out in that settlement. So, while it's technically true that the $38 million adjustment wasn't directly due to a recent settlement or claim, it's because they didn't replenish their reserves after the 2021 payout. This situation brings mixed news. The Q2 earnings aren't as dire as initially thought, which is a relief. However, it also signals there may still be some management issues at the top, as this sort of adjustment shouldn't have come as a surprise. When you look past the terrible net income number, the rest of the earnings report is not great, but it's not terrible either. Revenues have increased by only 2%, which is not particularly impressive. Despite significantly lowering prices and offering many discounts, attendance has only increased by 6% year over year, coming from a year when attendance was down by around 25%. It's important to note that they are still far from reaching their attendance levels in 2019, and they're even behind their 2021 numbers. Six Flags claims that year-to-date season pass sales are up by 50%, which makes sense given the discounts. However, when you compare this to the attendance numbers, it doesn't quite add up. The reason for this disconnect, as they explained in the earnings call, is that new season pass holders have increased by only 2%. This means that 48% of season pass holders from the previous year did not renew their passes for this year. This isn't a good sign and suggests that people might not be responding well to their investments, despite their claims. The high turnover in season pass holders indicates there's room for improvement. Six Flags attempted to soften the impact of these disappointing results by blaming the weather, saying, oh, it was too hot, it was raining, and so on. But the thing is, other theme parks like SeaWorld and Cedar Fair also made the same claim, bad weather. However, one must wonder, how many times can bad weather be the scapegoat? In fact, just a year ago, in Q2 2022, they used the exact same excuse, blaming the weather. It's becoming tiresome, really. If bad weather is going to be a recurring issue every year, then it's time to stop relying on it as an excuse. It doesn't matter if there were hurricanes every single day. It's a worn-out explanation. One positive note worth mentioning is that Six Flags provided some guidance for July, indicating that attendance for that month is up by 11%. This is an improvement from the 6% increase we saw in Q2. It appears that as the summer has progressed, more people have taken advantage of Six Flags season pass offers. There's hope that this attendance boost may continue into August, September, and October, especially during the popular Fright Fest event. So, despite this quarter being somewhat lackluster, it could have been worse. Initially, those numbers looked quite grim, but there might be some reasons for optimism regarding Six Flags. Looking ahead to 2024 and 2025, they plan to invest in new rides, returning to what makes them exciting and appealing. They're retiring high-maintenance rides and replacing them with cutting-edge attractions. This indicates a significant financial commitment to their core thrill rides. Additionally, they are addressing ride downtime, focusing on maintenance upgrades and ensuring that parts are readily available. While maintenance plays a role, the primary emphasis is on enhancing the thrill rides. It's fantastic to see that Six Flags is refocusing on what has always made them exciting and attractive, the rides. Ultimately, it's the rides that draw visitors, and it's reassuring to see that Six Flags recognizes this fact. In 2024, capital expenditures, which is the amount of money they plan to invest in the parks, will increase to a range of $200 to $220 million. This investment is set to rise even further in 2025, reaching between 230 to 250 million dollars. So, where is this money going? It's primarily air market for New Rides. Yes, you heard it right. New Rides are making a comeback at Six Flags Parks. 
This marks a significant shift in strategy. Initially, when Selim took over, the plan was to spend as little as possible on things like flower beds, shades, and benches, in the hopes of attracting more visitors. That approach didn't yield the expected results. But now there's a realization that new rides not only enhance the park experience, increase capacity, and reduce wait times, but they also serve as compelling marketing material. Six Flags is returning to its roots. Selim has finally understood the nature of the company he's leading. Just a year ago, he was emphasizing family friendliness, but he's now recognized that thrill rides are a fundamental part of Six Flags DNA. He's come to terms with the fact that he's not running Disney. He's in charge of Six Flags. It's surprising it took him a while to grasp this, but it seems that Selim now comprehends the company's strengths and its target audience. He's actively committing to investing in things that this audience truly desires, at least in his words. It's fantastic that Six Flags is refocusing on investing in thrill rides, but it's not enough to simply declare that intention. A well-thought-out strategy is crucial, determining when and what kind of rides each park should receive. Matching the right ride to the right park at the right time is essential. Take Great Adventure, for example. It's the second most attended park and a significant revenue generator, but it's facing stiff competition in the New York City, Philadelphia area. Nickel Universe and Hershey Park are drawing away potential visitors. Hershey Park, in particular, has made substantial investments and improvements, overtaking great adventure in attendance. While Jersey Devil is a decent addition, it's not sufficient to keep up with what the competition has been doing. For a park as important as Great Adventure, Six Flags can't afford to fall behind. There might be other parks like Six Flags St. Louis or Six Flags America that haven't received meaningful investments in years and could use new rides on the surface. However, investing in new rides at those parks won't yield as significant an impact as investing in Great Adventure, for instance. So, do you want me to provide a detailed breakdown of where and what to invest in? Well, that's a much more complex task. But the key point here is to ensure that each park gets the appropriate ride investments. It's as simple as that. Right ride, right park, right time. Nonetheless, I believe Six Flags is heading in the right direction. Despite the so-so performance in this quarter, it's the first time I'm actually on board with Salim's leadership. Oh, and he mentions wanting to raise prices again. Well, okay, I understand why, given the significant discounts. But this time, he gets it. Improve the park significantly if you're going to raise prices. I'm all for that. If you genuinely enhance your parks, elevate the ride lineups, then you can justify higher prices. But don't just jack up prices without any improvements like you did last year, Salim. Remember that lesson. When you combine this new thrill ride focus strategy with the expected price increase in the future, Salim believes, Six Flags can still achieve their goal of having 25 to 27 million guests annually by 2025. It might sound a bit optimistic, but I'm a believer. I think Six Flags can pull themselves out of their current situation. Just look at where they were a year ago. That strategy was never going to work. If they had stuck with it, as they claimed they would a year ago, it would have been a disaster. Salim has earned a second chance, and this time, he's making the most of it. For perhaps the first time in three years, I'm genuinely excited about the future of Six Flags. Today, we shared our commitment to innovation across every facet of our business. We're actively working on enhancing our culture, embracing digital training, optimizing revenue management, advancing guest-facing technologies, creating immersive experiences, introducing exciting new rides, enhancing the look and feel of our parks, improving food service, and expanding our retail offerings, among other things. Success is about not only capitalizing on our strengths, but also taking calculated risks, surmounting obstacles, learning from failures, adapting our vision, and sometimes reinventing ourselves. This holds true for both our organization and its leadership. We're thrilled about the positive momentum we're experiencing. On behalf of the entire Six Flags team, we're grateful for your continued support, as well as the backing of our shareholders, investors, guests, fans, suppliers, bankers, and most significantly, our team and employees. Without their dedication, none of this would be possible. 
we have an exciting lineup of events for the second half of the season, including Fright Fest, Kids Boo Fest, Oktoberfest, and Holiday in the Park. We still have 40% of our revenues ahead of us, and we hope to see you at these events this year. Have a fantastic day, and we eagerly anticipate our next conversation in the upcoming quarter. Thank you, and count me in, S. That was an inspiring speech, a true display of leadership. It's the first time I've heard you sound like a genuine leader. Well done, S. Now let's roll up our sleeves, stay focused, and make the right decisions. I believe in you. Just when it seemed like things couldn't get worse at the beginning of this quarter, we dug deeper, grasped the game plan, and realized seed it might not be all downhill from here. In fact, we could be on an upward trajectory for Six Flags for the first time since maybe 2019. That's an exciting prospect for theme park enthusiasts. So, share your thoughts in the comments. Do you think Six Flags is on the right track to reclaim its former glory from the 2010s, or possibly even surpass it? Are you a Salim supporter, or still have doubts about S? To be honest, I wouldn't blame you for the latter. Anyway, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next update. Take care.